Hey there folks, Mr. G here with another educational video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about percentages, and we're going to be looking at some word problems and applications of percentages, and um, how they can be used in different situations. One of the big things that I see with percentages when students try and do calculations with them is that when you are doing calculations with percentages, they almost always need to be turned into decimals first. So your percentages need to become decimals before you can use them in equations or in calculations. Fortunately, we spent all of last lesson going over how to convert between percentages and decimals, so this should be no problem. All right, let's try and use our knowledge of percentages, decimals, and fractions to help us solve some of these problems where we're trying to find the percentage of some number. Now, if you remember all the way back to our fractions word problems, anytime we see this word of, this means times or multiplication. So when we do 12% of $150, this is really 12% times $150. Now, if you just plug this into your calculator, 12 times 150, you're not gonna get the right answer. Because if we did that, that would be 12 times 150, so it's gonna give us something that is 12 times larger. But we know that 12% is less than a full whole, right? 12% is only 12 out of 100. So really, this is like a fraction of 12 out of 100. So it's definitely not right just to multiply 12 by 150. What we need to do is we need to turn this into a decimal. Now, if you remember percentages to decimals, all we have to do is move the decimal place. And for our decimal, it's always smaller than our percentage in terms of the number. So we would move our decimal place two to the left. And so what we would do is plug into our calculator 0 0.12 times 150 which gives us an answer of $18, which makes sense. We should end up with something that's less than 150. If we're thinking about something that is 12% of 150, it should be a lot less than 150. It should be about one-tenth. So if we want to find 0.03% of $1,200, what we would do is, again, multiply our percentage by our dollar amount, but, again, just like over here, we need to figure out what this is as a decimal. So if we take our decimal place and move it back two times, we would have a zero here and a zero here. So we'd end up with something like this, which we can plug into our calculator, which will give us a final amount of 0 0.36, right? 0.3% of a number is a very, very, very small fraction of that number. So we would expect our answer to be a very, very small number compared to 1,200. When we're dealing with something like a fractional percent, remember that we need to turn this into a decimal first, and we do that by looking at this fraction and thinking this as 1% plus half of a percent. So we got to turn this into a decimal first. Half of a percent, we can plug that into our calculator and get a decimal of 0.5%. We can add those two together to get 1.5%. And now we can turn it into a decimal, move it back two times. And now that we have this, we can complete our calculation, 0 0.015 times 900, which would give us an answer of 13.5. For our last one here, same idea. If we're trying to do this of, that's the same as multiplication. So we would take our decimal place, move it twice to the left, and then just plug it into our calculator. We would get an answer of 543. So all these questions are pretty similar. Really the trick is just making sure you know how to convert a percentage into a decimal and then understanding this of means times or multiplication, right? And whether you wanna think of this as a fraction, a decimal or a percentage, this is very similar to our word problems that we saw when we were talking about fractions a couple weeks ago. A fraction of a fraction, those are just the two fractions multiplied together. A fraction of a number, again, just multiplied together. All right, let's try applying our understanding to a word problem here. The mass of the human body is about 60% water, and of that water in a human body, about 12% is blood. So what percentage of the human body is blood? In this case, we're saying of the, human, of the water in the body, about 12% is blood, and 60% of the body is water. So really what we're looking for is 12% of 60%. So this is very similar to the questions we saw above, but now we have a percentage of a percentage. The key with this is to remember that when we're dealing with percentages in calculations, we need to make sure they are decimals, and that's true for both of these. So we need to make sure that both of these are decimals. So we need to take our decimal place, move it back twice for both of these, and now this is what we can plug into our calculator. Once we reach here, the key for this question is to remember that the answer is supposed to be in a percentage. So 
At the end of this, we need to take our decimal, turn it back into a percentage, which we just do the same thing but in reverse. So now we move our decimal place two to the right, and we get our answer of 7.2%. So about 7.2% of the human body, in terms of the mass, is blood. All right, here's another question. Population at Lord Bing is currently 1,200 students. The school administration predicts there is going to be an 8% increase next year and then an 18% decrease the following year. So how many students are they predicting will be at Lord Bing in two years? Now, there are a couple different ways that we can approach a problem like this, and I want to show you two in particular. The first method here is going to break down our problem into two steps. What we're going to do is look at our population of 1,200 students to start with, and then an 8% increase, we want to figure out what's 8% of 1,200 students. So, just like before, we got to take our, our percentage, turn it into a decimal, and we get that the 8% increase means that it's going to increase by 96 students. This isn't what the school population is going to be, this is how much it's going to increase. So, after one year, the prediction is that we shall have 1,200 plus 96, so 1,296 students. Now we have to figure out the decrease. So the following year is an 18% decrease. But it's an 18% decrease of this new population. So anytime we have a decrease happening, it's on whatever the current student population is. So after one year, it's going to be an 18% decrease of this new number. So now we do 0 0.18. 1.8 when we turn this into a decimal by moving the decimal place back twice. And now we're multiplying it by 1296. So the prediction is that it's going to go down now by 233.28 students. Now I know you can't have a fraction of a student. We'll round it at the end, but don't round in the middle. So now our new population after one year minus this 18% decrease will give us this as our student population. Now it doesn't make sense to have a fraction of a student, so let's round this to 1063, so about 1,063 students after two years. The second way that we can do this is using something called combined percentages. So what we're going to do is consider each increase and decrease as a percentage and combine them to the two together to see what the overall change in percentage is over those two years. So instead of breaking it down to two steps, we're going to do it in one big step. So the first thing to consider is that when we go up by 8%, that's the same as us having 108% of our original population. This 100% is our starting population, that's the whole. Because we're, we're increasing by 8%, we have everything we had before, plus an extra 8%. When we go down by 18%, this is the same as 82% of our population, because our whole is being decreased by 18%. So we don't have everything we have before, we have that, but minus this 18%. If we want to combine these two percentages together, what we're really asking is, what is 82%, because that's the change during the second year, of 108%, our change in the first year. These two combined together, using multiplication, would tell us what the overall change is, right? What happens when we increase by 108% and decrease by 18%? That's the same as saying, what is 82% of 108%? Those mean the same thing. If we wanna do this calculation, all we have to do is turn them into decimals first. We multiply these two together, and now we have the overall percentage as a decimal. What this tells us is that our population is 88.56% of what it started at. It started at 100%, it's gone down to 88.56% after these two changes. Now you might be tempted to convert this into a percentage, but we're not quite done the question, because this needs to be what percentage of our starting population. So now we want what is 88.56% of 1200, and to do that we want to make sure that this is a decimal. So already we're going to just use the decimal form here, multiply this by 1200, and you'll notice that we get the exact same answer that we did using these two steps, and we would round it to the same number of 1,063 students. So both of these methods can be used to get the same answer. Alrighty folks, let's check your understanding. Four questions on the screen here, pause the video, and give them a try for yourself. All done? 
All right, let's go over the answers. For the first one here, we're just doing a percentage of a number. So all we need to do is take this percentage, convert it into a decimal, then multiply. So our first step is to turn this fractional percentage into a decimal. This is like 2% plus 1 fifth of a percent, which is the same as 2% plus, if we plug 1 over 5 into our calculator, 0.2%. So this is the same as 2.2%. So 2.2% of $500. All we need to do is multiply and turn this into a decimal. We'll get 0.022 times 500 we'll get our answer of $11. 40% of test questions are multiple choice, 68% of the multiple choice questions are related to fractions. So really what we're looking for here is 68% of 40%. We need to turn both of these into decimals, multiply these two together on our calculator. And then once we have our, our answer as a decimal, we need to turn this back into a percentage, removing the decimal place to the right now. And there we get our answer to the nearest tenth of a percent, 27.2%. For this one here, this is very similar to the last question that we went over. In this one, I'm going to do it in two stages. So there's the way that you can do it all in one step. I'm going to do it in two steps here. So if we know that there's going to be a decrease by 15%, we need to figure out what is 15% of 12 degrees Celsius. So this is like 0 0.15 times 12, which is 1.8 degrees Celsius. So what that tells us is that our 12 degrees Celsius is being decreased by 1.8 degrees Celsius after our first day. So after one day, our temperature is 10.2 degrees Celsius. During day two, it increases by 30%. So we need to figure out what is 30% of this new temperature, 10.2 degrees Celsius. That's like 0 0.3 times 10.2 which is 3.06 degrees Celsius. So that would be an increase for our temperature. So we would have 10.2 degrees Celsius plus 3.06 degrees Celsius, which would give us an answer of 13.26 degrees Celsius. Now I know I didn't specify how many places to round to. Let's just leave it with two decimal places for this one. All right, here's a tough one. We're, they're predicting that iPhone purchases are going to increase by 20%, then decrease by 20% in the next two months. So what percentage of the current purchases will the purchases be two months from now? So this is where we're going to have to use our combined percentages. So when we have an increase of 20%, that's like having 120% of current sales. When we decrease by 20%, that's like having 80% of current sales. And what our question is, what is 80% of 120%? Because if we go to 120% after the first month, and then we want 80% of that new sales amount, of that 120%, what is that overall? Now you might be tempted to think, well, a 20% increase, 20% decrease, shouldn't those just cancel out? Let's see if the math checks out for that. So turning these both into decimals, multiplying them together, and then we want a percentage to the nearest percent, so now we need to turn this back into a percentage by moving the decimal in the opposite direction. And we get our answer of 96%, which you'll notice is less than we started. If we assume our iPhone sales are 100%, it's one whole, increased by 20, then decreased by 20, we see that overall we've gone from 100% to 94%. So this would be an overall decrease of 4% in our iPhone sales. Now you might be curious about why this is happening. The reason why is that when we go up to 120% here, and then we take 80% of that number, we're actually taking a larger chunk because we're taking it out of a larger number. So when we increase by 20%, we only increased by 20% on 100%. So we increased of 20% on 100%. Then we had a decrease of 20% but now we're taking that decrease out of 120%, the new amount here. So we're actually decreasing by 20% on a bigger number, which means that we're going to have a larger chunk taken away than what we added in the first place, which is why we end up a little bit less than where we started. That's the end of the video here. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check Teams for all the, all the homework and other activities, and I'll see you all in the next video.